some research into it, we looked at some Hubble's constant, uh, omega, and the average density of the universe, the origins, and what might happen to it. I'm going to hand you over to Nathan, who's going to explain the origins of the universe. <laughs> Not an easy task, but um, turns out the universe is actually quite big, and it's getting bigger. We can tell this from the stars, which, uh, when we study them, we can see they are red-shifted meaning they're actually moving away from us. But we can think about this and say, if everything's moving away, at some point it must have been much closer together. So we can go back in time and everything was closer. So if we go right back to the start of time, we can say everything was down right into one point, like this. And this is the theory of the Big Bang. And there are other theories, uh, religion, and there's theories that state the universe has remained constant forever. And there's proof to all the theories, but the most widely accepted one is the Big Bang, and it shows the universe is expanding and has expanded from a point roughly 14 billion years ago. Well, we know that the universe expands, but how does it expand? Edwin Hubble came up with the idea of something called the Hubble Constant. The Hubble constant measures the rate of expansion of the universe, or how fast it's expanding. It is given by the equation h equals b divided by d. h is the current value of the Hubble constant, v is the outward radial velocity, or speed, at which a galaxy is traveling, and d is our distance from that galaxy. Now the units on the Hubble constant are kilometers per second per megaparsec. A megaparsec, so one parsec is 3.2 light years, and a megaparsec is 3.2 million light years. The current value of the Hubble constant is estimated to be about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. This means that a galaxy at 10 megaparsecs away will be traveling at 670 kilometers per second. So the Hubble constant can tell us how the universe is expanding now, but it can't tell us how it will expand in the future. In fact, we're not quite sure about that. There are three possible ways it could be expanding. First, it could be accelerating or expanding exponentially, for, for example, possibly doubling or tripling every time period. Second, it could be decelerating, where it expands to a certain size and then collapses in on itself or remains that constant size. Last, it could be coasting or expanding linearly <coughs> by the same amount every time period. So we can work out the rate of expansion by using the curvature and the shape of the universe, and this all depends on the density. And this is then called the critical density, which is the Rossi in that, um, to um, sort of evaluate the other ones. Um, the critical density is the average density of that the universe would have to be for it to hold its expansion only after an infinite amount of time. And in this equation, h is Hubble's constant, and g is Newton's gravitational constant. So we can quite easily work out um, the critical density to be 10 to the minus 26 kilograms per meter cubed, which is roughly 10 hydrogen atoms per cubic meter. So then we can use the density parameter, which is omega, to um, find out what shape the universe will be. The density parameter is the ratio of the critical density to the um, actual density of the universe. So if the universe has a high density and the uh, density parameter is <coughs> less than one, it means the universe is closed in like a sphere shape. So two parallel lines would converge, up, converge at the top of the sphere. Um, but if it equals the critical density, it means the universe is flat and two parallel lines would stay parallel forever. Um, and so the universe would only stop expanding after an infinite amount of time. But if the universe has a relatively low density, it means it's got an open curvature, like a hyperbolic space, which is the middle picture in that diagram, and so it would continue to expand um, just at a decreasing rate. And that's just what's going to happen. Okay, right, I'm basically going to act as a storyteller here and try and explain to you the three possible, well, the leading three possible ideas of how the universe is going to expand. Right, so, the very one is called the Big Rip. 
and it relies on the energy density of dark energy to have no bounds, meaning that the universe will have a finite, does not have a finite size. And so as the universe continues to expand and grows, it will accelerate exponentially until eventually even the gravitationally bound systems like galaxies and solar systems will tear themselves apart. Eventually, even the <coughs> electromagnetic forces between atoms and molecules will be torn apart. And on an even longer scale, even atomic nuclei will be torn apart, eventually ending everything. Uh, second one, not on a higher note again, is um, the Big Bang Theory, which you may have heard of. Uh, no, Big Crunch, wrong one, sorry. Um, <coughs> which relies on the universe looking something like this, which is called the oscillatory universe scenario. Now this relies on energy density being less than zero. And so as the universe continues to expand, as we currently know it is, the energy density will reverse, and so it will crunch back together, ending in a hot, dense, nasty, cool. Um, thirdly is the Big Freeze, which is the most likely because it relies on the universe continuing to expand as it currently is, or how we know it is anyway. And so the energy density will eventually run out in this process because it's obviously getting so far away, and the universe will reach absolute zero, which is zero Kelvin for those of you who don't know. Uh, at this point, stars will burn out and no more will be made, and the universe will be dark. Cool. So we've now learned all about Hubble's constant and the density of the universe. But we have one man called Alexander Freiburn in 1922 who derived these equations, which links both of them together to give us the theories of the universe. And the easiest way to represent the outcomes of the universe is with a balloon. Uh, seems a bit crazy, but if I blow up this balloon, we can see that, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it at the back there, but there's loads of points on the, on the uh, balloon, which I'm going to now call the universe, because that's what it's supposed to represent. Each of these points are expanding away from each other at a rate of Hubble's constant. The volume of, bal of the balloon is supposed to represent the density of the universe. So what I'm holding there is uh, effectively a constant universe, one that's sort of expanded to its size and is remaining there. Uh, if I want to represent the big crunch, <laughs> everything collapses in on itself. Uh, if the universe suddenly started to accelerate faster and faster and faster and faster, and um, it started to get bigger, and bigger, and bigger, then eventually it would rip itself apart. <laughs> Which is not good news. Uh, luckily, it's not going to happen in our lifetime or undoubtedly our race's lifetime. A few billion years away yet, so we're all good. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for listening to our presentation. I'd like to thank our lecturer Stuart and our mentor Emily for helping us with this. Uh, Presentation on the universe, hope you enjoyed.